Hey guys, I want to do a quick little instructional video on the new 20 millimeter church uh, building. I'm not actually going to uh, do a full assembly here. I'm just going to go through all the parts and explain what they are, and where they go, and how they go together and things like that. Um, let's start with the sides. You'll notice that there's two different side pieces. One has the, the window frames in it and the other is just cut straight out. So basically these go together like so. That one goes inside of the other and they should line up flush with the inner edge here. Not the tab that sticks out but the inner edge and then of course the top and the bottom. So that's the way they go together. And like I said the reason why I'm not putting this together right now is because I think when I actually assemble this I'm going to want to paint this area first with like a, a white color or whatever color I choose for the window frame and then I want to finish the exterior of the building and then glue this in. It'll just make it so much easier to paint these inner parts when they're separate rather than the whole thing being painted and then get in there and, and paint around. So I'm not actually going to put these together now but if you were assembling this you would probably glue these two together right now and then of course there's two for the other side as well. The ends of the building work kind of the same way. There's an outside surface and then there's an inner piece that has the window cutouts and the door. Put those together. And they'll line up up here. These two edges should line up and as you can see on the inside they line up off offset quite a bit. So the main thing is to get these two uh, these two surfaces lined up when you glue them together. Now once you have these pieces done and assembled and you want to add these pieces in you'll see that these pieces just go into those little tabs lock right in there those slots and tabs go together right there. That's real easy to put together. The other side goes the same way. The other end goes the same way. So that's the basic structure right there. Real simple. And once that's together you'll want to use these buttresses that have the tabs on them. They just go in there. Simple. And there are a few buttresses without tabs on them. They look like this. And those go here for this edge and they also happen to cover up these slots here so you don't have to finish those they just cover them right up you just glue that right on there and then there'll be another one over there of course and then on the back side two more so that's the, the basic structure there um, the last bit of the main structure is the roof now the important things to remember about the roof are if you line them up you'll see that one is a, they're different sizes. One's a little taller than the other. There's a good reason for that. The, when you assemble these, you're going to want to line up the first one flush with the top here. I hope that's being seen well on the video. See, that's flush right there. Once you have that one on there, you'll take the longer one and it will overlap and come up to the top of the roof just like that. See how I've got that? So the distance between here and here is the same as this one except that this one's uh, taller by this thickness. So they go together just like that. Now the other thing to remember on the roofs is you see these lines on here. If you're using the shingle kit, you'll want these lines out because these are your guidelines where to line up the shingles. If you're not using the shingle kit and you're just going to paint this or apply some other kind of shingle material, you'll probably want to put these lines down rather than up. One more thing to note on the roofs, you'll notice all of these lines are the same distance apart except for the very first one. The very first one is, is quite a bit wider. This one's 0.300 inches and all the rest are 0.2. The reason for that is if you're using the shingles you line up the first one on that first line because the shingles are 0.300 total and then the second one will line up on the second line and then of course they will overlap and you offset each one. You don't line them up 
uh, with the lines this way you offset each one by by half as much now they hang off the edge on both sides you put them all on and then trim them off flush and just follow those lines all the way up and that way you won't have you know wavy shingles um, you can make them purposely a little bit wavy if you want which makes them look a little more random and a little more rustic you know but the, these are a good uh, a guide for you as to where they go in the spacing so the last thing we need to be concerned with is the tower tower has two walls which are let's see here I'm getting confused here two walls which are similar to the rest in that they have an inner piece and an outer piece and they are the ones with the door openings on the bottom that's how you know which ones get that okay the one that has a door opening on the bottom and no window here this is the one that's going to go against the church so these two go together the door is open and the upper window is open and as they line up if you line up the door and the window you'll see that there's an eighth inch approximately uh, step here and that's where the next piece goes in but we'll get to that in a second now the front one that faces away from the church has the uh, has the stained glass window detail has the door window and that one goes with this one line those up glue them together and again it has that eighth inch step there so the reason for that eighth inch step there is that gives the side pieces a way to index in and go together just like that super simple now this last piece is a floor piece that goes in here and it rests on the top of the inside of the front and back wall that's why the front and back wall in inner pieces are not as tall as the actual wall so we thought about that you can put that in there now you can glue that in if you want to leave it in permanently or you can have it removable if you're going to put some stairs in here or or do something crazy in there that's totally up to you um, to make the whole building a little more sturdy um, probably gluing it in will keep everything nice and square but that's totally up to you how you want to do that same goes actually for the main church itself when you build the roof you can put these two pieces together glue it it's 90 degrees right here and that can be a removable roof if you want or you can glue it on totally up to you however you want to do that um, so that's basically all the pieces and how they go together um, like I said I think if you're going to do any kind of texture to the outside or anything like that you may just want to paint these window bits here first um, painting them before they go together also allows you to be a little messier you can just paint you know the whole thing if you want it doesn't matter and then only what's going to show through is you know that little bit uh, so that'll make life a little easier so I would probably put this together I would just take the outside pieces and put the outside pieces just being really careful to keep everything 90 degrees get this main structure together the four pieces put the buttresses in and then texture this the way I want and then paint it the way I want and then I would paint these separately again like with a lighter color white or a wood color or whatever you want to choose for your window framing and then glue these in and then do the same thing for the ends paint the door um, brown or green or whatever you want and again you don't have to be very neat you can paint you know all the way out to here it doesn't matter and then paint this area and paint that area and then glue that in make life so much easier to paint these separate so there you go that's the uh, 28 millimeter church it's a it's a big building uh, pretty cool looking building that's about it as with any other kit on our site if you have any questions at all as you're putting it together or uh, or before you buy one uh, you have any questions just send us an email and we'll answer your questions and we want to help you get through this and have a fantastic product when you're done Thank you very much for watching. Okay guys, I just wanted to make a little addition to my uh, construction video and show you what the building looks like when it's uh, basically all together without any of the inside walls in.
As you can see back here, I've got all the inside walls primered. I'm going to paint them as I was discussing and then put them in after texturing this. But what I wanted to tell you guys about on this video is uh, a little something about the roof. Now the roof hangs over on this end um, almost an eighth of an inch, exactly 0.100 inches. And it doesn't hang over at all on the other end because it comes in contact with the tower first. So what I suggest you do is just make a mark on here, right there, even with the edge of the tower. Do it on both sides. Pull this off and then mark back about a sixteenth of an inch or a little less. And then just sand that or cut it or however, you know, get that off so that there's a little notch in there. So when this roof goes back on, you can push it forward and it'll come this way and, and hang off a little bit on this end. So it'll make it even on both ends. But that's what she looks like. It's a nice big building. Um, I, Looking at this, I'm thinking I designed it for 28 millimeter, but I think a lot of the uh, fantasy gamers like D&D &D types that game in 25 millimeter could probably get some use out of this building as well. Pretty impressive looking building. I can't wait to get it finished and see what it looks like.